Hello, and today, and for the next few days, we're going to be out and about in the Alps, uh, specifically on the Tour de Mont Blanc. As you can see behind me, I'm at the start and finish, although it's a circuit, so it's a bit arbitrary where you start and finish. But this seems to be recognized as the place where most people start. It's a place called Les Ouches, it's very close to Chamonix, it's just down the valley. Uh, I'm actually not starting uh, until tomorrow morning. I'm camping just further down. Um, but uh, I've walked back up to get to the official start point uh, and uh, to say that I've done it and I will have walked the whole route that way. Okay, see you in the morning. And there we are, it's morning. Uh, so, good night's sleep at uh, Bellevue campsite. They could uh, hear storms in the mountains but it never actually rained where we were. Uh, and now, uh, gonna get the gondola up to uh, Bellevue. <laughs> Decided not to trudge through the woods for the first morning. It's quite a long day. So yeah, uh, and also, I love going on gondolas. And there we are, like that, as if by magic, we're at the top. Uh, so now, uh, try and find the trail. So here we are, uh, ici, uh, at the start, more or less. So that's the Beyond Massey Glacier, and you can see the stream coming down there, and that's where we're heading next. So a quick time check, uh, I left the campsite, got on the first cable car gondola at half past seven this morning, managed to get to that bridge about half past eight, uh, it's uh, quarter to nine now, uh, been a quarter of an hour of just uphill through the forest and come out to the clearing and next heading up to that coal, coal de trico. So the paths or the signs on the path aren't measured in distance, they're measured in time. So uh, I don't know whose pacing they're using. I uh, seem to be roughly on pace at the moment, it said two hours from the top of the cable car, so I should get there around 10, uh, but who knows? We'll see. What a view. Not quite at the cold yet, but not far to go. <sighs> Made it to the Col de Trico. Oh. Uh, you can see where we're going next, down there, and then up uh, beside those sort of cliffs, and then down again. So, yeah. Well, I'm going to have a little rest first, I burnt it. Also, a quick time check. Uh, it's just before half past nine, so uh, it's about half an hour faster than the signs say. So, um, but I was going steady, um, stopped a bit to film, didn't have too many rests, so yeah, it gives an indication. Just come down uh, virtually on the outskirts of Le Contamine. Hopefully uh, get some uh, some shopping, a bit of lunch, uh, 
and a bit of a rest. Beautiful day. I mean, look at that mountain. Stunning. So that was Le Contamine, or is Le Contamine. Uh, lovely little town. It's Sunday, so it's quite quiet, but managed to get a meal. Uh, went to the spa, stopped up on a few bits of food. And now we're heading uh, up the valley and then uh, up quite a hill onward. This is uh, Notre Dame de la Gorge, or Our Lady of the Gorge. Uh, it's a pretty church. Uh, opportunity to get some fresh water as well. And dunked my hat in it, because it is hot. Uh, the next bit, I think, uh, it's been relatively flat coming out of Le Contamine. But from now on, I think the path starts heading upwards. Yep, as predicted. Uh, Never looks very steep, but I can assure you that is uh, quite steep up. Oh man, that's a slog. Uh, I haven't filmed a lot coming up there because it's just exhausting. As you can see, more cows and cowbells. Must do their head in. There's our little campsite under the mountain. Uh, so we're going up over that coal to the to the left tomorrow morning. So we start with a good old climb. And that took me to the end of day one. So in summary, day one started by taking the cable car to Bellevue, uh, which saved a couple of hours of walking. Uh, then found the trail, uh, took the Col de Trico variant, past the Beyond Massey Glacier, over the wire bridge, and up to the Col de Trico itself. Then there's the steep descent down into the valley, where it passed uh, Refuge de Miage, and then up another hill to get to Auberge de Truc, where I stopped for a bit, before descending down into Le Contamine, where I managed to have some lunch and pick up some groceries. From there, it's a, a walk relatively flat up the Bonnant Valley, past Notre Dame de la Gorge before climbing and climbing to get to my stay for the night, which was uh, a campsite at Refuge de la Balme. Seven o'clock in the morning. That's where we came from yesterday. That's the Refugio. And in the middle at the top there, uh, we're just around the corner from that, is where we're heading. Up. So it's a day of two halves. First half mainly uphill, second half mainly downhill. Uh, and they're both tough. Huh. <laughs> 
everyone leaving at about the same time. Yeah, that's quite a can. So just over 2,000 metres, which means at 600 metres, I think, about that to go. Uh, so quite a climb yet. Uh, when watching other YouTube videos, there wasn't that much footage of this section. I can see why, because it's quite a slog. Uh, and it'll probably be the same for me. Starting to get a bit rockier. Uh, up there's the coal. I made it to Col de Bonhomme, oh. at 2,300 metres. Good to get this landmark. Views are spectacular, which I'll show you now. So that's where we came from. And that is where we're going, somewhere down there. I'm not going to lie, that was tough going. Ah. So heading up there, I think the coal, next coal is not too far beyond that. Refuse uh, to the Quad de Bonhomme. Uh, I guess I'm going to eat there. It's maybe it's breakfast or lunch. I struggle to eat, which is uh, I think it's tiredness, it just makes me not want to eat. But I forced it down, it was nice. Uh, so now, uh, onward. Uh, the Grand Col de Four, I think. It's pretty barren up here. Not much grass. Hopefully near the top now. I made it to the coal and there's still snow here. Probably the only bit I'll see. Oh, it's downhill from now on. cows. Hello.
So day two finished at a campsite uh, near the refuge de Motet. There is a building and some ruins and a number of people camped there. And that's what I chose to do too. Day two in summary. We started in uh, the morning near the refuge de la Barme and had a pretty steep climb up and up about 600 meters of ascent to get to the Col de Bonhomme, where the views were great. Yeah, it's important when you leave the Col de Bonhomme that you take the path on the left and keep going up to another col, which is the Col de la Croix de Bonhomme. Uh, just after that, there is a refuge where you can stop and get some uh, food and drink. And then I chose to take the variant, which takes us up to the Grand Col de Four, which was the joint highest point on my Tour de Blanc, Mont Blanc journey. From there, it's a pretty steep descent, uh, which gradually gets better or easier down into the valley, past La Ville de Glacier, and up towards Le Refuge de Motet, where the campsite was. Good morning, welcome to day three of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, today, starting just outside Le Desmortet, uh, the campsite, uh, which was pretty cheap by Jow last night. Uh, heading up over Le Col de la Seine, which will take us from France to Italy, and then heading down towards Cormoyer. Cold, I was saying, about two hours. Just had the first bit of rain. Uh, don't know if it's proper rain or whether it's just like light shower, uh, but rain cover on just in case. Uh, not enough yet to put my waterproof on. See the campsite from here. So about halfway up. Well, the rain really came in. We're at the cold of the scene. Uh, not quite the spectacular views I was hoping for. But uh, yeah, uh, this is the border between France and Italy. Is this Italy? Yes. <laughs> when did it change? Up there? At the coal. Oh, oh nice. Refugio Elisabetta up there. And this is some sort of a memorial or shrine. That's better, the sun's coming out. Which is always nice. Temperature is quite mild, it's nice, it's not too hot. Perfect sort of walking weather, really. Uh, and the views are amazing.
So this is Val Veni and it is spectacular, beautiful. Just going past the Cabane de Combol, uh, heading down, I think the plan, there's not much camping around this area. So rather than go up and over that hill and staying to the valley, because there's some campsites down here. And uh, I think that will uh, uh, be the plan for the day. I mean, look at this, it's just scenery everywhere. Amazing. So I arrived at Hobo Camping and had an idea. Um, there is a bus that can take me uh, into Cormaya and then another bus that can take me up to camping at Grand Juras. Um, and if I stay there, I could probably stay there two nights leave my tent and most of my stuff there and do a sort of uh, an easier hike tomorrow with less luggage and then get the bus back from the other end to there in the morning so we'll see how that goes so just caught the bus from hobo camping into call my air uh, and now waiting for another bus to take me to Grand Jurass. Did I mention that both buses are free, which is very nice. So I've made it to camping Grand Jurass. Uh, it's a beautiful evening and it's a lovely campsite. So I've pitched tent, uh, I've had a shower, a warm shower, hot even. Uh, I've washed my clothes, especially my socks, because they're about to walk off faster than me. Uh, and now uh, they've got a wood-fired pizza place here, so I've ordered one for my tea. I've also booked in for tomorrow night, so I'll be back here again. So, day three started at the campsite uh, near the refuse de Motet. Uh, from there, it was a big old zigzaggy climb up to the Col de la Seine. Uh, this is uh, the border between France and Italy. So it was uh, au revoir France and buongiorno Italy. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't great when we got there, uh, but as we dropped down into the valley, uh, come up towards uh, Refuge Elisabetta, uh, the sun came out, the clouds parted, and the views got brilliant. Uh, this was a really lovely stretch of walking uh, down through uh, the Val Valveni, past the Cabin de Combal and the glacier, and then carrying on down the Veni River to Hobo Camping. My original plan was to stay at Hobo Camping, but then I had a bit of a brainwave, realized that if I got a bus, uh, a free bus uh, into Cormaya, I could then get another free bus out of Cormier, uh to Camping Grand Jurass. Uh, the buses in these valleys are great. They're pretty regular. And like I say, they're free. So I made use of them. Good morning, buongiorno. And today, day four of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, I'm in Cormier. Uh, and heading up to Refugio Bonatti. Uh, slack packing today, because uh, I've left my tent and a lot of stuff at the campsite, uh, Le Grand Jurasse. Uh, so yeah, uh, looking forward to having a slightly lighter load. Uh, and then I'll be circling around, getting the bus back there tonight. So let's crack on. It's a slightly later start than I'm used to. Uh, the bus didn't arrive till uh, just gone nine o'clock. 
Uh, so it's probably about half past nine now, uh, which on other days I would have been two hours into walking. Uh, but actually it's nice to have a slower start. And it's a big hill to start with, as always seems to be the way. So just under two and a half hours of climbing to Refugio Batoni. I think I said Bonati earlier, uh, but it's Batoni. So after leaving the road out of Comaya, start taking a path up through the forest. Uh, it sort of switches backwards and forwards. This is a not bad bit. Some bits have got lots of boulders and roots and quite steep. Uh, but it's cooler. So that's Kormaya down there where we've come from. Uh, a little bit to go. But yeah. For about half an hour. That's yeah. Kormaya again. Great viewpoint. Ah, Refugio Batoni. Boy, am I pleased to see that. So it turns out the refugio is closed until midday, which is about 45 minutes time. Um, so I'm not gonna hang around that long. There's a little bit more uphill. And then I think most of the rest of the, the day's walking is sort of along a traverse. So mildly up and down, but uh, no big climbs, which I'm very relieved. So we're starting the traverse now. Oh, and if it's like this, it's going to be lovely. A bit cloudy though, so the views aren't as good as I'd hoped, but maybe it'll clear. So the Grand Jurassic. So Mont Blanc is up there in the clouds. And this is the valley. Little river. Ah, oh, what a relief. Finally made it. Let's see if we can get something to eat or drink. Lentil soup. With a view. So that was uh, Refugio Bonatti, which is very nice. Had a lentil soup, which was really filling. Couldn't eat it all, but uh, yeah, just what needed. 
Uh, it's really cooled down a bit now. I've got about five and a half kilometers to go uh, to get to the bus stop, um, which should be about two hours. Fixer upper. Nice view though. That is the Val Ferret, which is rather beautiful. Uh, and Mont Blanc is up in those clouds somewhere. Not sure I'll actually get to see it, ironically. Well, it started raining properly now. So it's out with the garden refuse sack, uh, which is actually brilliant. Uh, keeps the rain off and is uh, water, uh, sorry, breathable and very well ventilated. So, yeah, looked like a wally, but uh, comfortable. Uh, so I'm above the bus stop. I can see a bus down there, which will be going shortly. So I've got an hour or so to get to the next one, which I think I'll make. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, I don't think it's going to brighten up either, so there might not be much more videoing. There's the bus. We've made it back to the bus. Uh, it's a steep descent and very slippery, but got there in the end. So, uh, that's day four done. See you tomorrow. Because I needed my tracking poles, I had to swap them for branches and keep my tent up today. And now it's time to switch them back. So day four uh, started from Cormoyer. I got the free bus back to Cormoyer from Camping Grand Jurass and then made my way up the uh, hillside through the forest, twisting backwards and forwards through the trees. Uh, eventually the view opening up and being able to see back down to Cormoyer below me. Uh, from there, uh, Refugio Batoni was closed, so gave that a miss but followed the sort of terrace path that contours up the side of the Ferret Valley, stopping at uh, Refugio Bonati, uh, where I had a very nice lunch, uh, and then carried on again, uh, contouring round until eventually got towards the end of the valley, uh, where it started raining, it's quite slippery, but I descended down uh, and made it to the bus stop. Good morning and welcome to day five of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, second attempt, uh, yesterday's day five was abandoned. It was thunderstorms and rain and I was tired. So I took a day off in Courmayeur, uh, had a hotel break. Uh, so yes, just walking down to the bus stop to get the bus to the back of, up to the end of the valley. Val Ferret, where I left the trail uh, the other day. And there is Mont Blanc, with the sunshine on the top. First time I've properly seen it from this side. So the bus has just dropped me off. Uh, so now we properly start day five. There we have made it to Refugio Elena, which is actually a little bit further than I thought. I thought it was just up from the valley, it's 45 minutes. Uh, looks like we're just about to go into the cloud, uh, which is no bad thing. It keeps it cool. Uh, if it clears at the top, that would be wonderful. But hey, you know, it's still wonderful. So that's Refugio Elena, uh, which is, uh, looks like it's got road access to it, so I guess it gets well supplied. Uh, 
we're now heading up to the Grand Cole Ferret, which I think is going to be a two hour Stairmaster session again. This is the Grand Cole Ferret. So, it's uh, goodbye Italy. Hello, Switzerland. And the sun came out. What a view. This is Refuge La Poule. Uh, beautiful little sunspot. Uh, I think I'm going to press on uh, to La Fouli or into the valley. Uh, I'm feeling quite fresh, so I'm going to make the most of it. But well, isn't this nice? Ah, oh, what a lovely day. I feel so much better for a rest day. Uh, feel refreshed, the sun's out, blue skies. Life is good. Apuli, that's where we're going. So this is La Fouli. Uh, there's a little supermarket where I stopped up, got a bit of food and a bit of a rest. And now I'm heading on to, I think I'm gonna go to Champagne. Uh, it's uh, just under 15 kilometers, but I've got the whole day to do it. It's not even one o'clock yet, so I'm gonna push on.
It's like a work of art. Amazing. Another pretty Swiss village. It's chocolate box time. So that's looking back where we've come from. What a beautiful valley. All sorts of hardware on that. Huh. Ooh, a cave. <laughs> there you go. Not going to go in it. Instead, I'm going to go across the bridge. Whew. Oh, it's nice to be in the forest, in the cool, in the shade. The sun is lovely, but it saps your strength. Oh, some more drinking water. With a view. <laughs> when you spend a long time just on your own, mainly walking, you have a lot of space to think about things. And uh, I'm sure some people have very profound thoughts and, and to be honest I think I probably have as well but I'll just let you into a little insight into my mind uh, so one of the things that's been occupying me today is playing a little game of which pine cone looks most like a turd uh, I took a few photos uh, I'll, uh, I'll drop them in see what you think no not a very good one that's not a bad contender. Now that would be one of those little disappointing ones. And a wild boar. Bit of a scraggy looking squirrel. What's this thing? I think it's a slug with a knife and fork. Rabbit and a toadstool. Oh, that's the sight for sore eyes. Coming up to Champex Lac. Ah, oh, finally. Champex Lac. Beautiful. It's too good not to have a swim. Ah, oh, it's the best wild swimming spot. Ah, so arrived at uh, Champex Lac campsite. That was a big day. That was about 30 kilometers or so. Uh, but what a day. That was gorgeous. Uh, about eight hours or a bit more of walking, well, with rests and a swim in the lake. Um, so that's put me back on track after the rest day. The rest day, I feel so much better after the rest day. Um, so yeah, back on track, um, sort of two stages in one today, um, but felt good. The weather was wonderful, the scenery spectacular. Um, and I'm just enjoying the last bit of sun and a cold beer. I think I've earned it. So yeah, uh, that was uh, day five done. So yeah, uh, day six tomorrow. So I've just come back down to the lake for some tea. Uh, I just recharge my batteries. <laughs> but what a spot. Beautiful. So day five started at the end of the Ferret Valley where the bus dropped me off. And I rejoined the Tour de Mont Blanc Trail, uh, climbing up past Refugio Elena and then up and up up to the Grand Col Ferret, uh, which unfortunately was just in the clouds. But not long after that, uh, descent came out of the clouds and the sun came out and we are in Switzerland. Uh, past uh, Refuge La Poule and down into the valley where we put, went through a number of pretty Swiss villages, the first of which was Ferret. Uh, 
crossing over, walking through the woods and then coming up, following the road round into La Folie, uh, where there's a chance to stop at the supermarket, uh, get a few provisions before heading on again down the valley through the woods, um, following sort of the, above the river most of the way. You zigzag through the trees, it's quite cooling, saw some black squirrels. And uh, again, then came out through another few little Swiss villages, very pretty, before uh, crossing over and ascending uh, quite steeply up through the woodland, uh, eventually uh, arriving out at a uh, destination, which is Champex Lac. If you get the chance, have a swim in the lake, it's beautiful and then press on towards the campsite. Good morning, welcome to day six of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Just leaving the campsite at Champex Lac. Uh, big day today, I'm gonna do the uh, Fenetra de Arpet variant, which is 1200 meters of up, and about 1300 meters or more of down. Going to Trient and then on to Le Puti, uh, to the campsite. Well, that is the plan. Let's see how it goes. Early chairlift going up the mountain. Uh, unfortunately, it's not going the way we're going, so can't make use of those. So the route starts following this like a leet stream, uh, very gently inclining, uh, very nice start for the day. And now we've reached a boardwalk and I love a boardwalk. Day. That is the Fenetra de Arpet. Uh, and you can see it looks like it gets pretty rocky at the top. There it is, Fenetra de Arpet. getting nearer to the top. It's getting steeper and it's very rocky and bouldery, almost scrambling in places. That's where we've come from. Wow. It really is a proper boulder field now. Uh, you can see the, the coal we're heading to. It's the gap just up on the left. Steady.
Ah, made it to the top. This is the Fenetra de Arpet. And it's a climb. There's a glacier. And then we are going to be heading down. That's quite a down. That was hard work. That was four hours of climbing. And the last, the last bit over the boulders and then up that zigzag was really tough. Uh, so time to have a rest, enjoy the view for a bit. <laughs> and then there's a small matter of this very steep bouldery descent. Still, this feels like proper mountaineering. It's a great view of the Glacier de Triant. Wonder how big that was a few years ago. Still going down. There's the glacier, glacier. And, and the rest of the valley. What a gorgeous place. Well, I've been descending for about an hour and three quarters, so I made it into the sort of the tree line, the forest. The path is quite bouldery and rocky. You can see that's actually where it goes next to that tree. Ah, oh, but it's nice to be in the shade. Uh, and the river, or the big river at the bottom is uh, hopefully not too far away. Well, I managed to refill my water bottles using the water filter from the river. So I'm fully stocked up on water again, which is good because I'd run out. Uh, well, I'd made it until I got to the river. Uh, but now, yeah, just a peace of mind knowing I'm fully stocked with water. So onward to Trient. Five minutes after I'd filled up my water bottles, came across this place. I uh, hadn't really expected to see a sort of cafe here, but it's very welcome. It's a bread and soup, apple juice, a bit of a rest, sitting down in the shade. So now I can crack on. Looks like I'm going to repair it. I need to put my foot through it. This path has been a very welcome change from what we've had so far today. It's uh, contouring around the valley. There's a little leet that is just next to us. So the cooling effect of the sound of running water. Sometimes in shade, sometimes not, but uh, not stepping over boulders every five seconds either. So yeah, easy going and just taking it steady because it's a hot day. So this is La Puti. Uh, where we're staying tonight, where I'm staying tonight. Uh, I think that's the campsite just there, next to the river. 
and tomorrow heads off up that hill there. That's arrived at the campsite, it's day six done. That was tough. A lot of up and down and a lot of uh, slow going ground. It was not a good path for most of the way. It's uh, a lot of boulders, uh, but fantastic views of the glass de Trient. Uh, beautiful evening. I'm gonna get the tent set up and uh, have a shower. Uh, I'll call that one done. See you tomorrow. So day six started from the campsite outside of Champex Lac. Uh, took the path up through the woods, up towards our pet and the valley. Uh, at this point, the path was uh, quite reasonable, a steady sort of incline. But as it went on, it got steeper and steeper. About this point, uh, you start to run out of streams that you're crossing. So if you need to fill up with water, get it done early. And then the last section is boulders and a pretty steep zigzag up to the top. And then once you get to the top, uh, after admiring the views, it's another pretty steep zigzaggy climb or descent down into the valley uh, where you pick up the Trient River. Uh, there's a cafe uh, which you can restock at. Um, and then you have this lovely contouring path that takes you... It, Eventually it would take you to Trient, but there is a shortcut that takes you off uh, zigzagging down through the forest to Laputi, where the campsite was. Good morning and welcome to day seven, I think, of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Just leaving the campsite at Laputi. Uh, it's uh, after day seven, you start to really get to see some familiar faces, so really nice to see uh, sort of different people packing up in the morning. Uh, might see them again, might not. Uh, it's just sort of the way it is on uh, on these trails. You sort of make friends for you know, a day or two uh, or a minute or two. Uh, so today is uh, heading from Laputi to Tre Le Champ. Not such a big day. Uh, the rain is meant to come in in the afternoon. Uh, and uh, yeah, I just want to get somewhere before it really starts hammering down. But we'll see how it goes. It's another steep up and hill zigzag start to the day. Okay, so that's where I came from this morning. You just about see the campsite. La Puti. Finally coming out of the tree line. I think that might be the coal at the top there. Oh. Oh, the coal is definitely in sight now. Probably less than half an hour. Woo. Oh, am I glad to see this place. Time for a sit down. So this is the view the other side. A bit cloudy today, but cooler for walking and beautiful I forgot to mention left Switzerland back in France so that is the Chamonix Valley behind me I don't know if that bit there is actually Chamonix or if it's around the corner uh, but uh, home stretch now so just coming down to the Col de Posette and then up to that, which is the Aguilette de Posette. And then after that, it's pretty much downhill all the way. 
So I think that is the Glacier de Grand and I'm walking up this ridge which is very pretty quite rocky with blueberries looking down I think that might be the Aguil de Midi in the background there oh it's difficult to know what to wear it's not hot not cold made it to the summit of the Agalette deposit. <sighs> Just over 2,200 meters. Uh, quite a few false summits <laughs> up that ridge, uh, but this is definitely the top now. I'll give you a look around, it's good views. Okay, Nancy, stand there. You got to, uh, come on, Nancy, smile for me. And that's the route down. And the zigzag over there is the route up for tomorrow. Well, the rain that was forecast is here. And uh, yeah, poncho on. So drop down off the ridge, now back into the forest, which is this uh, another steep zigzaggy path, uh, roots and rocks and things. But uh, yeah, it's just sort of lightly raining away. Uh, but, and I think the forecast is to get heavier later. So. Uh, I, don't, I think it's less than an hour to trailer shop now. And then I'll make up my mind what I'm going to do from there. So I made it down to the road, uh, the turn off the Trello Champ, where there is uh, no birds and you can camp there. Um, yeah, so I think that'll be the end of the day today. Uh, so that's the end of day seven. Thanks for watching. So day seven started by leaving uh, the campsite at Le Puti. Uh, saying goodbye to some friends and then climbing up, zigzagging through the woods uh, up towards uh, the Col de la Balm and the refuge at the Col de la Balm uh, where I could stop and have a drink. Uh, this is where we left Switzerland and went back into France. Uh, from here you can see views right down the Chamonix Valley and on a good day I guess you'd see Mont Blanc. Uh, descended down to the Col and then up to the Agalette de Posette, which was uh, a little steep climb. Uh, again, beautiful views from the top. And then headed on down the ridge back into the valley. And this is about where the rain started. Uh, by the time I got to the valley, it was pretty heavy and the forecast was only getting worse. So I stopped there. <laughs> Hello and welcome to day eight of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Not the day I was hoping for in terms of weather. Uh, it's, um, yeah, chucking it down. Uh, it's forecast for like this to, for most of the afternoon or most of the day to be honest. Uh, hopefully easing up in the evening because uh, I want to camp. Anyway, starting from Trello Champ. Not sure where I'm going to finish. Uh, so yeah, uh, and the ladders. 
not the day I wanted to do the ladders on either. Okay, so it's not the weather I wanted, but let's look at the plus side. Uh, it's not cold. It's not windy. Uh, I'm doing the Tour de Mont Blanc. I could be sat at my desk at work. Uh, so yeah, it's still a good day. It's still a good day. Oh, it's always good to make it to a signpost. Uh, just feels like you've got somewhere. Uh, anyway, heading towards La, well, La Chagerie, hour and a half, La Legere, two hours 15. Um, there's a refuge near there, I might stop for a bit. Anyway, let's press on. Getting near to the cliffs. Good view, eh? Which means uh, getting near to the ladders. <laughs> Great view. Ladders just ahead. Nearly at the top, I think. Whoa. Still going. Next set of ladders. Up there. And across there. Okay, decision time. Have to look at the map. This was the refuge at Le Blanc. Uh, meant to be spectacular views, uh, but as you can see, it was uh, just downpour. So, it's really, uh, really wet. That isn't a river behind me, that is the path. I'm going to head down to La Flegere. It's a refuge there, and uh, make a plan from there. So, as you can see, uh, I have decided to get off the mountain. Uh, it's not the type of weather I want to be camping up there. The plan was to camp up near uh, La Flegere uh, lift and refuge, which, uh, but the ground is soaking, the weather is not improving. So I'm getting the cable car down and I'll find somewhere to sleep in the valley. I've got a return ticket so that I can get back up here again in the morning and carry on. So we'll call that day eight done. Not the best day. Uh, a real shame. Uh, I was so looking forward to seeing the views from the, the ladders and but it's still an adventure. Right, see you tomorrow. So day eight wasn't the day I was hoping for. Uh, the weather was awful. But pressed on, leaving Trailer Champ up through the woods to the ladders, which was still quite fun despite the weather. And then up, uh, I took the variant past uh, the lakes, Lac Chaserie, uh, and on to Lac Blanc, which I, to be honest, hardly saw. Uh, from there, then decided to head down to La Flegere, um, where I got the cable car down. The original plan was to camp, but it wasn't the night to be camping on a mountain. So leave it there.
Good morning and welcome to day eight and what's probably the last day of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Uh, just got the cable car back up from uh, Le Flegere or La Praze to here, which is Le Flegere. And uh, yeah, last day, about 18 kilometers back down to Les Uh The weather is dry, that's important. Uh, and uh, the forecast is to get a bit brighter. It's still in the cloud. Hopefully that will part and we'll get some views. Look at that tiny, tiny patch of blue sky. Every little counts there. So we made it to Pram Plaz. Uh, so now it's, as you can see, an hour to Col de Brevant and a little bit further to the summit. Uh, and it's up that way. Still not quite got any views. Uh, it's threatening though. So fingers crossed. So that's Pran La Plaza, where we've come from. <sighs> Almost clearing, not quite. <laughs> so this is the Col de Brevant. Uh, it's a 2,368. Uh, I'm not sure how far we got to go until the top of the Brevant. Uh, but the top is the last high point on the route. So a final push, but quick drink first. Hang out, this little guy. Oh, there's two of them. Oh, yeah. Hiya. Next ladder section. <laughs> Traffic jam. Well, we made it to the top. This is Brevant. Uh, and it's uh, where the cable car comes up. <laughs> See, worth it for the views. Uh, spectacular. Um, oh well, I'm sure it's lovely on a nice day. <laughs> Okay, so this is what the view should look like. That's what the view does look like. Let's just pretend. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing right now, okay. Ignore that text, that's, that's just floating in the sky. So that's uh, Refuge Belle Le Chat. Uh, Good lunch spot. So the path heading down. Bit of a view. Take what you get, eh? We're going down, 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 down. There's the valley. That's the end. A glimpse of Mont Blanc. There we are. 
Mont Blanc in the sunshine. Okay, that's the view. Apparently that is the statue of Christ the King. Uh, probably looks better from the other side, but you get Mont Blanc this way. Well, the finish is in sight. And so is Mont Blanc. Amazing week. Made it back down to the valley, just got across the river and the railway. Uh, and then we're back where it all started. Not long to go now. So that's it, done. Tour de Mont Blanc, done 170 kilometers or so. Uh, nice to finish in the sunshine. Uh, whole range of emotions really, uh, relief, uh, pride, uh, happiness and sort of sadness that it's over as well. So yeah, but I'm tired and I am going to go and find a campsite and set up and have a beer. Uh, so I sign off now. Thanks for watching. So day nine, final day of the Tour de Mont Blanc. Started at Le Flegere at the top of the cable car and took the Grand Balcony Sud uh, route which sort of contours sort of uh, more or less around the valley until we get to uh, Pran Plaz which is another cable car station where the route then takes its final big ascent up to the Col de Brevent and then around the back of the mountain where it continues to climb to actually get to the Brevent summit itself from here, it's downhill all the way, uh, back down past Belle La Chatte Refugio, or Refuge, and carrying on back down into the woods where the path zigzags. And at this point, the clouds disappeared and we got some great views of Mont Blanc and the Aguil de Midi. Uh, past the statue of Christ the King and then back into Les Uches.